will scan the area. Sensors indicate trouble. What are the chances that this thing's been sitting out here and still works? Holy crap. If you guys want to see more of Mother Nature's carpet, toys, and some other weird random things, then stay tuned. You're going to enjoy this video. Hey everyone, welcome back to a brand new adventure. Today I'm coming to you from an area of Pennsylvania that I've known about but never officially explored. Behind me here is an old dirt road. I believe it was an old service road at some point. Right alongside of me is the highway. And you may be wondering about my outfit. I am dressed in blue. That is because I am unofficially trying out for the Blue Man Group. <laughs> Just kidding. But I'm doing my part of social, social distancing today and want to get out here and take a walk down this road, see what we find. It may be a short, uneventful video. It may be exciting and a little bit longer, but there's only one way to find out. And if you'd like to find out too, all you have to do is come along with me. So you can easily see that this road is used pretty much on a regular basis by all terrain vehicles. I do know vehicles can come back here as well. I don't know how far it goes back, but that's what we're going to find out today. It's also pretty blustery and windy, but hopefully the microphone is doing a good job of take, <clears throat> taking care of that. But once we reach something that's worth sharing, I will pick up with the video, but just to show you right here, we got a little miniature swamp, some cattails, and somebody dumped some trash. You can actually see uh, this water's been here for a long time. There's actually some algae growing in it. And of course, too, we'll see if we come across any of good old Mother Nature's carpet. Looking back where we came from, the guardrail officially ends here. And we are seeing more signs of trash. Specifically, drinking trash. The woods are pretty thick here. Nothing's really grown in yet for springtime, but it's just around the corner. I mean, on the calendar, springtime's already here, but Mother Nature's having a tough time picking her climate. It's in the 70s one week, in the 20s last night. Hey, here's more of what I don't like to see. People coming back here and, <clears throat> excuse me, dumping their household trash. Plastic at that too, you know, which does not disintegrate. And it's stuff like that that often leads to areas being closed, shut down. Just very recently, you know, with Centralia Graffiti Highway, it's pretty much shut down now by the owners, and it's not for one specific reason. It's been building over time, but one of the main things is littering, you know, leaving the trash behind. And I feel for the residents that still live there, even here, you know, brush is dumped, which is one thing. Now we got some furniture, or futons or mattresses, whatever they are. And it looks like even more ahead. So it looks like we're coming upon a dumping area, which is not what I want to really share in this video, but hopefully it'll get better. There's a little culvert, modern one. Some very green algae water. I'm not sure if you guys could spot it, but on both sides of the road, there is objects that are standing out to me. Do you see them? I'll give you another second. Well, even though we're not looking for anything that's abandoned, we did find signs that would relate to an abandoned area. And that is toys. You can believe it, look at it. <clears throat> Got a little sit-and-push scooter there, 
and a type of firehouse. I'm kind of curious as to what exactly they are. Oh, just lost my glasses and a rabbit scared me. Ugh. Okay, so let's uh, see exactly what this is. Oh, it's some type of... Uh, lose my footing here. Definitely some type of uh, toy firehouse. I don't know. I guess it's like play school or preschool or whatever brand it is. Yeah, it's a... No, it's Transformers. Okay. Oh, so the things go up and down when you twist that. Oh my god, it still works. Let me get the microphone by it. What are the chances that this thing's been sitting out here and still works? Holy crap. I don't know how long it's been here. I would guess at least a few weeks. But I mean, we've had some pretty bad weather. Wow, that's uh, quite shocking. Definitely could be cleaned up and used for someone who had a, like a thrift store or something. They could sell it for a dollar or two probably. And here's the other thing, we got a little, like I said, a little sit and push scooter or buggy, whatever you want to call it. And across is uh, something else too, so definitely some interesting finds within the trash heaps. Pretty cool to find uh, something that still works and operates. Got a horn in the distance. Now, there's two other items I found. This one I actually just stumbled upon. Got an old school miniature TV. You guys remember these? Yeah, look at that sharp ACDC with the knobs. That's when in the olden days, your remote control is either your family member or your children. But yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if this could still work. I mean, it is wet, but here's the model number. Made in Tochigi, Japan, April 1977. Wow. Blast in the past. I actually find some pretty cool stuff out here. Here's brightness, contrast, V-hold, H-hold, which I believe is your vertical horizontal lines on the screen or the positioning. Yes, this came out four years before I was born and it's still intact. I guess, you know, it's in pretty good shape. Huh, definitely interesting. So the other thing we found too was uh, this toy here. It looks like it's taking some gunfire on it. Yeah, it looks like someone shot it with maybe a 22 or a bird shot. Another weird random thing back here. So we got the uh, Transformers toy over there. We got a TV there. Another toy here. And someone that just kind of uh, came back here. Like I said, people do come back here. Hopefully he wasn't coming to dump. You know, I missed too is actually another swing right here too. That's one of the ones you hang from the porch and swing your toddler in it. And I'm not entirely sure what they're doing. I don't know if they're spooked that I'm back here or what, but... 
we're gonna keep doing what we're doing though so here's uh more trash here and we got a intersection here so we may take a walk down and see where that goes and all throughout here there's stuff littered in the woods even on the embankment of the highway there my gut is that they're uh, maybe to come back here to do some shooting i know people come back here and do target shooting which wouldn't be a good thing for me there's a big tv here it's busted up Oh, and we got another TV. Wow, this is like a TV mecca back here in the woods. This one, I don't think it's as old, but definitely more classic amongst households. You guys remember this one here with the wood cabinet? I would guess this one takes a remote control. I would guess late 80s, early 90s. It's got a push button here, controls. Timer, TV, video, volume, channel, power. There's a sensor for the remote. The speakers are here, which I don't want to rip off. And there they are. And it looks like someone took a box of Remingtons to it. 3030 Winchester. Craziest stuff you find back here, though. That would make for a uh, good photo opportunity. So I'm gonna snap a photo, I'll be right back. So it looks like the truck is back kind of where we were by the toys there, they're parked. I don't know what they're doing. We may or may not hear gunshots, but all I want to do is do my job at social distancing and people got to show up. What are the chances? Uh, oh well. We're just going to go the opposite direction. I did want to go down towards that direction where that trail was because we'll see, could possibly see what's down there, but if they end up target shooting that way, I'm not going to be able to. So <clears throat> we will just uh, take it moment by moment. And now we're going up a rocky outcropping here. Some type of hoses there. Drainage hoses, maybe vacuum hoses. Just littered with random stuff. I don't know where this is gonna come out to. I do know the general area, but I don't know this specific trail, so. I won't get lost, but I am curious to see why people are coming back here. If it is just a trail, or if there's something at the end that people come to visit. So the landscape is changing here. I will uh, switch you around, give you what I'm seeing right here. So the rocks are kind of diminishing. We are still going upwards a little bit and there's some mountains here in the background. Actually, despite for being cold today and breezy, the sun's very warm. I'm pretty close to wanting to take the sweater off or sweatshirt hoodie, but I really don't want to, that would be too cold. Yes, yeah, so this looks like a type of uh, type of party spot, maybe. Looks like there's a trail that goes out this way. There's definitely signs of activity from back in the day. These little humps and mounds, these are not natural. These are man-made. 
most likely back in the day for me, colliery. But let's just take a little gander around this bend here, see what's over here. If not, then we'll continue on the main trail if there's nothing of interest. <clears throat> it's actually a pretty cool area though. There's some different rocks jetting out, different levels. It's pretty open and spacious. More garbage, of course. All right, looks like this is taking me right along the highway, which I don't want to go that way. I think it's just an ATV trail that goes up and over. But, uh, oh yeah. I did spot something ahead, which you may or may not be able to see. Let me get up there and give you a closer look at it. Look at the growth on that tree. If you can see that or not. It's not what I want to show you, though. It's just something I spotted. You can see here, too, this almost looks like it's man-made, even though it's not. It is stacked. And then you got a tree growing right out of the top of it, which is always, you know, kind of bizarre. And my carpet, of course. But I did see a much nicer patch of it over here, which almost looks like a sinkhole. Or uh, maybe a cave, I don't know. Yeah, it looks pretty nice. Let me give it a little bit of uh, vibrance to it. All right, let's go back. Yeah, there's these like little sinkholes or subsidences or depressions, whatever you want to call them. It's hard to see, but that goes down right in the middle, probably close to six feet. But I do want to check out the inside of this one here. So I had you guys sitting right up on top of there and I was getting nervous. I thought this was maybe a bear den. There actually is an opening here to go into. You could kind of see, I'm gonna stick you in there a little bit. I'm not gonna go in there though. I don't have any lighting and I don't know if there is anything in there that could potentially hurt me. Yeah, so there I am, I'm sticking you guys in as far as I can reach. There is definitely a cavity big enough for something to be in there. And on top of that, too, it's also some daylight. Uh, where are we at? Right there. You can see, obviously you can't fit through that, but it is separated where you can see all the way through to the back side which is up over that hill there. So it looks like these shifted at some point to form this gap, but that regardless has been here and is wide open. I may come back, you know, with some lights or with uh, someone. I just don't want to go in there alone right now, but it is intriguing though. And you have to love the moss. So we're going to say goodbye to the cave or opening for now. We may return at a future date. But we're going to get back on the main trail and continue along. So far, haven't heard any gunshots. Don't know if those people are still down there, but we're going to still keep searching, enjoying the adventure, and see what we discover.
So tell me something, are you guys enjoying the video so far? If so, give it a thumbs up. So just a short distance away, we were just over there, right where that tree split on the other side of that. Came over here and found almost an identical looking area. This one now is filled in with leaves, so it doesn't look like there's an opening. Not to say that there's not, it could be buried under the leaves. So I think this whole area may require some more time to uh, check it out, see what else we'll find. But definitely pretty cool though. Another trail going up that way. See the mound of material here. This may connect with other trails and lead to an area that I think I have an idea where it's going towards. So I'm not going to follow it all the way because, you know, one trail leads to the next, to the next, to the next. Next thing you know, you're a few miles away and <clears throat> have to do all that backtracking. Oh, okay. Yeah, this is going to have to be a return trip. It's going to be hard to see because I am wide angle. But right where I'm pointing there, there's actually a hole there. It's a dark spot that goes in. And up in the distance, there's some really large groupings of rocks, which could potentially hold some surprises of some natural caves or pockets or anything. Here's more signs. People dumping. Looks like part of a toilet right there. <clears throat> well, this is a pretty, pretty wide open area. So we got a trail going off to the left down here. And up here, like I said, is the big groupings of rocks. So as I mentioned, if you want me to return, it will be based on your feedback, but that looks interesting to say the least. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna follow this road a little bit further around the bend, see if there's anything of interest. If not, I'm gonna turn around and either go down this way or go back to where the garbage was and go down that other section of trail there. Nice reflection actually with the water. Oh, it's really quiet here now. More weird random stuff. You look down the middle there, it's a big, big pipe. I'm not sure if that's metal, maybe concrete. I don't believe it's going into an opening. I think it's just laying there. But as the Hava got back here, you know, that's a pretty big, heavy piece. I'm guessing maybe it was on a truck and they rolled it down there or something. Here's a cinder block. Here's more pieces of piping. I think this is like the terracotta piping, if I'm not mistaken. Is that what it's called? Oh yeah, here's a big section of it here. Just weird random stuff. So this just keeps going. There's a large litter of tires over there. More trash. Trail keeps going. More trash. It's definitely a very cool area, but I think I know that's gonna to lead to another road eventually, which would force me to backtrack. So I'm gonna turn around here and we're gonna shoot down that lower trail, which I have a pretty good idea where it's gonna take me to. And from there, we can work our way back up towards the area where we started with the transformer toys and stuff.
So we were just up on top of there on that trail, going back that way is the way we came originally. And now we're gonna follow this down and take it for a little ways, which I think is gonna drop this down in elevation. And we'll see what we find. But I do think there might be remnants of the Laurel Line trolley down that way because I made a video on it, which was on the other side of Montage Mountain Road, and the tracks stopped because of the road. Where now we're on the other side of the road, and they may pick up, pick back up down here. And that'd be cool to find. I do know the rail bed does extend past Rocky Glen. We've seen that. I've been on that before but not this far back behind the lake. But uh, yeah, let's keep moving here. We are dropping down quite a bit. Hey, you wouldn't want to come by here full speed, up or down. You'd either blow out a tire or flip over your handlebars. Oh man, there's a huge, huge pile of tires down here and something that's torched as well. All right, we'll pick up that when we get down a bit closer to it. So here's the start of the tire pile. And these are, I believe, like semi-truck tires, 18-wheeler tires. The type that get recapped. This one here looks like the cap blew off of it. And there's a pile of tires that burned back here, which is not good for multiple reasons. I mean, it's very heavily polluted smoke. And as you can see, it almost charred. It did char the tree. It could have started a pretty bad fire. And then it leaves all this, the wiring. But look at the pile here. There's a lot of tires here. There's probably over 25 tires, maybe 30 of both commercial tires and regular automobile ones. This one, I don't know, these may have been even too old to recap. I'm not sure if they're modern enough. This one looks like it's recapped. And now it's pretty much home to mosquitoes because they're all filled with water. And this is a um, Newton Fleet Trailer Uniroyal. What size is it? It's a 12 ply, 10 by 20. I don't see the. It's an odd size. Yeah, 10 by 20, load range F. That's so a pretty thick ply. 11 R, 24 and a half. Regroovable sidewall. Yeah, commercial tires. This is a Goodyear one. 11, 24 and a half. I don't know why they would bring them back here. I mean, you could recycle these. It's a shame though. There's a few more, but we're gonna continue onwards. I know it's hard to see here, but off in the distance is a lot more rocks, big rock field to the left, almost like a boulder field, but much larger. And straight ahead through the trees is a gargantuan rock about the size of a small building or like a box truck. And behind it are some rocky faces and outcroppings, which look like potentially, you know, I'm gonna take a quick walk up there. There might be potentially something that are worth returning to. So I'll see you closer to that area. So here's the massive rock. I'm going to set you guys down and go in front of it and show you just how big it is. All 
Now what I want to show you is behind here by that grouping of rocks. And it almost looks like from a distance here, like a hunting blind, like a netting. It's actually covered in what Cliff has said is lichen. It's almost like a little flaky material. But you can look, there is some openings. Oh, here's a big chunk of coal too. Big chunk of anthracite coal. That's some good stuff. Oh, you found any uh, signs of a dumping here. It's like a, I don't know, that's not a mason jar. It's like a type of uh, maybe medicine. 300 on it. I'm just laying there. And of course a tire. But look at what I was explaining. It looks like camouflage netting. And actually, yeah, it goes up through here. So again, I'm by myself. I'm not going to go in. It looks like it may go in around the corner there behind there and it goes up there which is like a little tiny channel definitely big enough to walk through but the camouflage netting which is just lichen is that's the most I've ever seen it's like flaking paint chips but like I said earlier me coming back here is going to be dependent upon what you guys want to see we did spot those areas earlier where it look like little sinkholes, depressions. And this is just a massive mountain of rocks here that has some cool formations to it. So if you guys do indeed want me to return, I will include this. And here's the lichen here I was telling you about. You can see, it's very dry. And it just kind of flakes off. I'm going to snap a photo or two, and then we're going to get back on the trail. So checking Google Maps to find my position, looks like the way this trail is heading is going to be towards the former rail line, which is going to bring us to the bottom portion of this uh, slope here. And I think we'll pick back up with the former Laurel Line rail bed. Now the only problem is that I have to ascend back uphill on a different trail, but this should bring us to at least the generalized area that I want to get to to find out if that rail line did continue. Like I said, back behind Rocky Glen, it's an ATV trail now, but the rail bed does continue for a length of time. But this area back here I'd never explored, so we're going to find out together one way or another. But as long as we keep going in this direction, it should bring us there in a relatively short amount of time. And for those of you who like looking up at the treetops, especially on partly sunny skies, this next segment is for you. That's actually a really cool shot right there. Almost out of a uh, scary, spooky cemetery. So quick update, we just came down that trail and we came down to an intersection here, to a T intersection. Got a red arrow, go to the right, Go to the left, but something in the background is what I was looking for. That is the lower line rail bed. So it does extend all the way back here. It's actually a really awesome man-made stone culvert. 
which I've been through a few, several years ago. And I'm going to return. I'm going to return this summer to go through that one, and one that I showed along the Erie Line, further down that goes alongside Rocky Glen. So there's at least one or two of these back here, including this one, and then one up on the mountainside where the Erie Line is that goes between Glenmore and Rocky Glen. I showed one there too, which spills out into the outlet. So in the summertime, going to return with some water shoes. Looks like somebody actually dammed it up. That actually may even be deep enough to, it might be deep, deep enough to swim in because water is backed up here. So they dammed it up somehow. That might be a little swimming hole. You know what? We're going to get down to it. We're going to walk the rail bed and I'll give you the top side view. But I am really happy to see that it is still existing. Now the ties and rails are gone, but there are ties laying on the embankment there. When they ripped up the rail, they tossed the ties off both sides. But you could clearly see it's a berm ridge line for the rail line. So there's actually some tagging. It looks like um, some pink ribbon for maybe a surveyor or something like that. But let's get down there and give you a topside view of that culvert. Then we're going to work back towards Montage Mountain Road. And here we are. This is the Laurel Line rail bed. What's left of it anyways. Now it's an ATV trail. If I'm not mistaken, I could be wrong. You guys can correct me if you know better. I do think the tracks were over here because I did see it looks more flatter over here. There's also ties on both sides of it, but I'm pretty sure the rails went here and this was the little, you know, access road next to it. But I am seeing though, I wonder what's going on. There's a lot of markings here with tape or a ribbon. What does that say? I don't know what that ribbon says. But there's blue ribbon all throughout here. Somebody's been through here marking this up. I want to see what that ribbon says. It says W914, somebody wrote. Delination. I don't know what that is. I'm going to have to look that up. But yeah, here's the water flowing that goes into the, through the culvert, which we're going to show next. But yeah, this whole area is all marked with blue ribbon. And there's like handwriting on it, but I don't know. It's like numbers or markings. That's odd that they would mark or flag an area like this. It's kind of like wetlands. As far as I could see, there's random blue ribbons. And it looked like they were probably put here relatively recently in the last couple of months. Even a white ribbon over there too. Has me perplexed, not really sure. So here's where I was seeing, I think this is the rail line. You can see a rail tie sitting here perfectly in line and there's actually more of them here too. There's one here, more up ahead. I'm about 99% certain this is the rail line right here. But I want to show you there's more blue ribbon. Look at everywhere. This is the other side of the culvert where the water is entering into. I want to show you that first. If you guys can see that water is so crystal clear it's you know stained brown the bottom but the water itself is clear there's the culvert i've walked through that before many many years ago and this is spring-fed water this water comes up from under the ground and from the mountains 
far in the distance. Now here's the ribbon. Like this is what I don't understand. It says C3245. We got a polka dot ribbon. All down here is all ribbon. I really hope they're not gonna like develop this or something. This is such a nice area. But I did say though, in my video, walking the Erie rail line, where I can't find the other culvert, that I'm gonna return in the summer with some water shoes. We're gonna walk through parts of this. We're gonna walk through there, get some underwater footage, maybe do a little snorkeling if it's deep enough. So that definitely will be happening in the near future, in the coming months. I'm going to snap a photo or two. We're going to go up on the other side, look down where the water is exiting, and then we're going to head back because this will lead to Rocky Glen, and we already know what's back there. So I'm glad we found this, though. I'm glad to see that when I came through this years ago, I didn't know that that was actually the Laurel Line. I thought it was just an ATV trail. But upon further research and diving more into it, I can confirm 100% that is the rail bed right there. So it turned out to be a, a lucky find today. So there's the rail bed on the left, the trail here in the middle going towards Rocky Glen. This is going to lead us out towards Montage Mountain Road. But here is the other side of the culvert. And these are not just like ordinary modern culverts. Oh my God, this is so deep here now. Wow. Holy crap. They actually went through, somebody went through the effort to dig this out. That is, oh, wow. I'm like perplexed. This is, I could jump from here and be safe. That's how deep that is. I walked through this before and I walked up to my knees only. That is so clear. I may have to stick you guys in the water. Yeah, this was never like this. You could see, well, at least I could see where the level was. This is like excavated out. It's like they dug it up to here to make a pocket, a swimming hole. Wow. This is like a perfect little spot. And this is, you know, almost in my backyard. I'm going to try to get on the other side of there where that little last stone is and submerge you guys to see how it looks under underwater. Before that, I just want to get you a view from out here. Yeah, look at how cool that is. Wow. That is, it's like a little, almost like an oasis, like a, it's just so cool looking. And you got the ferns on the outside of it, some moss on top of it. The only thing that's taking away from it is the ribbons, but that is such a cool shot now. I'm so excited to return here. This is going to be one of my first spots to return to in the summer, but enough of me blabbering. Let me snap a few photos and then I'm going to be right over there and submerge you guys in the water. I spotted something here too on this big rock here. There is a bolt kind of encased. Oh yeah, it almost chips away here. Yeah, look at that. That was just stuck right there. No, oh, I'll just leave it right there. Well, I don't have a very long selfie pole with me today, a selfie stick, so I'm not gonna be able to get you in too far, but let's check it out.
so looks like it worked out pretty good i can't wait to see the footage you guys already saw it from what i could tell it's crystal clear if i can vouch it's very cold my hand is turning red again it's this mountain fed spring water i wouldn't drink from it but it is for the most part pretty clean clear water now over here this water here is flowing into this that's because there's a source coming underneath the rail bed underneath this little ridge line berm here of water feeding into this as well so it's a combination of coming through the culvert and coming kind of up under the ground that's forming this source of water here which leads to the back of rocky glen lake which is as we know drained at this point but i can't wait to return here this is such a cool spot and i'm so glad that they dug it out because you could literally i could stand in there probably be up to my chest that's how deep it would be and it's super clear and a really really hot day the cold water would feel good i can mount you guys to my head or my chest get some underwater footage do some snorkeling walk around through the creek bed it's just going to be an incredible time and this is another place added to the list to return to in the summer but we got to get moving let's get back up on the rail bed and head back in the direction that we started from and hopefully you guys aren't minding that this is obviously a longer video this is actually supposed to be a relatively relatively short video i only plan on showing you that dirt road where we started but then look what happened we started following trails started coming down the mountainside and found a whole bunch of other in my eyes awesome things so hopefully you guys enjoy this longer solo adventure because i'm having a fantastic time but let's get back on the trail as i was leaving just made a really quick discovery what do you guys think you think that's real it looks like the same type of paint it's painted with a brush april 2019 we've seen that date there's no qt but that might be them interesting so we're walking on what is called ballast this is what originally went under the rails under the railroad ties to help with the runoff of water and now it's part of the trail here which is collecting water and we're through a type of rock cut here a little miniature one there but the rail bed continues along this way it's not easy walking on this but at least i'm not getting wet and there's some really cool patches of moss let's liven that up just a little bit yeah, that's super gorgeous i love when it's kind of on the rocky faces like that and it just soaking in the sun really nice and bright and green and onwards we go we're going to follow this as far as it'll go to see where the rail bed does end and then we'll see it most likely splits off in two different directions because it can't go all the way through because that is montage mountain road that's blocking it from the portion that i did a video on before and all the videos i did mention during this video you'll find links to them down below in the description if you want to watch them for yourself and here's a railroad tie really thick moss on top of it and we're still continuing along here's another trail marker that one's like striped with zebra i don't understand the ones in the wetlands though all the blue ones i'm just hoping they're not gonna start building back here or anything because it's a really nice natural area it opens up quite nicely here and here is a good spot to see where the rails used to be the ties you can see the indentations actually the ties are still there actually a nice grassy patch now 
<clears throat> it looks like maybe a little animal trail here. And here's all the ties. So just more confirmation. Let's see if we get a poke up on top of here. It looks like something came climbing up here, whether it was a person or animal. And it's like a little flattened out area and then it goes back down. There's a lot of woods here though. I mean, you could kind of get lost if you didn't have GPS and didn't have a good sense of direction because certain areas it does go pretty thick. Especially back in the 80s and 90s, this was all undeveloped. There was just a ski resort here and now it's shopping areas, hotels, baseball stadium, timber. Move that other way so it's not blocking the trail. Very nice area though. And people have been mentioning to me, hey, if you guys, you know, if you had a quad or a dirt bike or something, you would get there much quicker. I don't dispute that. And I would love to have one. I've grown up riding dirt bikes and quads and street bikes since I was seven years old. I've actually been doing some pricing and some research on getting a side-by-side. -side. The only problem I run into is that I'd have to trailer it around and my escape doesn't have a hitch on it. I had to look into it to see if it could actually be added onto it to pull a trailer to pull the side-by-side -side to get to the locations. My only concern is that I would buy it and be landlocked, have no place to ride it because places are posted or I don't have a way to pull the trailer. So I have to really do my research, as I said, to make sure it's feasible. But if things do work out in the right direction, maybe later on this year, I might look into getting a side-by-side. -side. I'm not gonna get top of the line, you know, 200 horsepower, $30,000 all-terrain side-by-side, -side, but maybe like a mule or something like that. Something by Honda or Kawasaki. Maybe even, um, I know Bass Pro Shop sells a nice one. I forget the name of it, but it's a four by four. And it's got like all the bells and whistles. So we'll see down the road. We may have an exploring mobile, which would make life much easier. I could drive nice and slow. If I see something, stop, get off, show it to you. And I think you guys would like the driving footage as well. If I mount this action camera, somewhere on the top or in the inside or even wear it on myself it would be pretty cool now we're coming upon more blue ribbon again this is intentionally marked there's actually bumpers to cars right there too what is this here oh wow look at that it actually drops down that looks like it's almost deep enough to walk through. Wow, that is so cool. I didn't even know this one was here. Let me check the other side. I am finding a ridiculous amount of cool stuff back here. And these old culverts are a favorite of mine. Let's see. Yeah, it's coming out down here. Okay, here we are. Yeah, look how cool that is. I bet you we could walk in there with some lights. That is so awesome. This one's smaller than the last one, but still equally as cool. And I am kind of getting stuck here, trying to get out. And snagged on branches and stuff. So yet another thing to return to. Can't swim in that one, but I'll definitely walk through it. So I'm picking back up where we left off. Here's more blue ribbon. All throughout there, somebody walked through that area to place all those. There's dozens of them. And here we are straight ahead. Following the rail line. So without me 
drawing this on too much further and boring you guys to death. I'm going to walk this straight away here. Once we come to something of significance, either the end of the trail or something else that really stands out to me, I will pick up at that point. So, like Chuck Woolery says from Love Connection, I'll see you guys in two and two. So one quick observation I just want to make note of is that I keep an eye on these ribbons. There's more blue than pink, but the blue ones are following the water channel that is snaking through the woods here. And that is where all the blue ribbons are. So wherever it's wet and the water is flowing, that is where the blue ribbons are. I think it's Stafford Meadow Brook. And the pink ones, I don't know what they're for, but I do know the blue ones. I could clearly see them following the passage of water. So if you're doing something as far as tracking it or something, hopefully it's for the good, not for the bad. I'd hate to see them ruin this area. But that was just a quick update. So I'll see you guys in a moment. So something I'm noticing along the way here, I thought they were just random objects. These are actually some type of uh, porcelain type connectors for, I believe for the trolley line or something. They would have been on a pole or overhead cable, but they are pretty much everywhere. There's more there, there, and all up and down. There's actually some more bigger ones over here. They're almost, they remind me of electrical insulators for like the telegraph lines or poles, but these are significantly bigger. So if you guys happen to know the exact name or what their use is, we'd love to hear it. But every time I try to gain some traction here, I keep getting sidelined with more items. See, here's more here too. They're on both sides and they're, I've been seeing them for quite a while, even by the culvert that was really deep see now there's a trail okay I have an idea now where we are so I'll keep you guys rolling here and just share with you um, as I mentioned earlier I walked the Erie line back towards Rocky Glen and show the culvert the Erie line is right there top of that mountain or hill or ridge line, whatever you want to call that. That is the Erie line. The tracks are still there. I walked that from Montage Mountain Road all the way back to Rocky Glen, Glenmore Golf Course, where I did show you the culvert, culvert there, which is significantly bigger than the ones we saw today. So I do know that the lower line did parallel the Erie line. The Erie line's up there, lower line's right here. And now it's kind of coming to a point up here. The Erie line's coming closer lower lines moving straight ahead and they're gonna come to a a point somewhere but where we started was actually way up there so I walked quite a distance today I don't know how many miles but as far as excuse me elevation we did drop down quite a ways and obviously we had to go back up which I'm not looking forward to but I think, if I'm not mistaken, this is going to continue on and then the trail will go up to the Erie line. I'm curious to see what happens with the rail bed. I think it's just going to kind of diminish into the mountainside where the road is. That's my guess. But we'll find out in just a few moments. And for you guys, it'll be a couple seconds. Tell me I found another toy. I don't believe it. Way out here, too. You guys see it? Now, just to give you a reference, lower line up there, Erie line, laying down here in between. Unbelievable. I don't know how this stuff makes it so far out here. This is like one of those play school touch the oh it's fisher price yeah it's like those touch things where you make the different things do 
like reactions. I'll give you a demonstration here, see if it still works. Yeah, that's like a uh, air, it's supposed to push it, but it's leaking out to make something hit the bell. That's actually a bell there. This is a open door, you put little figures in there. Yeah, there's a little upstairs. Butterfly. Oh yeah, you drop something up there, it comes out down bottom. So weirdly bizarre. I gotta snap a photo of that. It's uncanny. Oh, there's a little spider. I guess I deserved his habitat. <laughs> All right, let me grab a photo or two and then we'll continue on. Now these I could definitely recognize more as very large insulators. They're broken, but these would be on either electrical poles or telegraph lines telegraph poles but more signs of the past laying right on the bed of the lower line but still have not reached the end yet let's keep moving on so finally without any more distractions I've reached the end of the line presumably we're looking back at the direction I came from the left the tree line is the Laurel line. Right up on top is the Erie line. And they came to a point and the Laurel line disappears. It is now buried under this material, which was put here for the construction of Montage Mountain Road, which is just on top of there. So back in the days when it was operational, this line would have continued straight. This mountain wouldn't be here. I'm not even sure, I have to check the dates to see if Erie Line, which I think started in the 1940s, 30s or 40s, was operational when the lower line was here. I'll do a little digging on that and put the information on the screen. They may have operated at the same time, maybe separate time frames. And possibly, if I am correct that it is different time frames, the construction of the Erie Line partially buried the lower line. but. Again, I'll do that research for you guys and put it on the screen. You probably already saw it. But now we know that it does continue, you know, towards Rocky Glen, down towards Avoca, Pittston area, eventually down to Wilkesbury. And on the other side of Montage Mountain Road is where we did our video walking north towards Scranton. So this is kind of a break in the action. But I'm going to get to the top of it, though, and show you the Erie line, just as a uh, reference as to what I was talking about, where I did the other video, which is going to be linked down below in the description. But now we have some questions answered and a better map in my mind, at least, as to how it, the line used to look. But let me get on top of here and show you the Erie line, and then I'm going to wrap up the video. This is definitely surveyed for something. This is fresh. Now, this area line is actually a public trail according to Google Maps. It shows up as a public recreation area. So I don't know what the proposed plans are. But let me get right up on top of here. Oh, look at this too. This big, I think this is all concrete. It's smooth on top of this little bump and something sticking out of it. That's kind of crazy. But I do have thoughts I want to share on a few different things. So let me get up on top. Oh, look, at, I found the old rails from the Erie line that would have went right across. Some of them are still there. There's piles of them here. And it looks like Panera Bread lost their sign. 
But here's what I was talking about. This is the Erie Line. And the one video I did, I started right here and I walked it that way. The Erie Line goes across Montage Mountain Road and those tracks going off is for the Electric City Trolley Museum that goes to the trolley restoration shop. So they do use a section of the old Erie Line, more recently known as the Erie Lackawanna for a small section of it. Then they have their own old section of the Erie Line that they still use, a three mile section. So let me uh, get a good spot here because it's kind of windy and then I'm gonna give you my final thoughts like Jerry Springer. So I do have a few thoughts I want to share. Number one, this turned out to be an incredible adventure. I was smiling ear to ear with everything that I found and was able to share with you guys. You know, starting off with the toys, the rocky outcroppings, the little tiny caverns, the endless trails, the, the moss, the, as they call it, nature's carpet, and unfortunately the trash, the piles of tires, you, know, you take the good with the bad, but at the very end, my favorite parts was discovering that that culvert sign is uh, not culvert sign. That culvert stone culvert going underneath the rail bed is dug out. It's a deep swimming hole now, at least five feet deep. So I am super excited to return and to get some more summer footage for you guys in the water because the flagpole's making noise. It's going to be a heck of a time. I can't wait to come back, and it's relatively easy to get to you know there's parking close by now I know the direct route to it which is walking the old lower line it will take us right to it now behind me here you can see that's Montage Mountain Road Stafford Meadow Brook that we saw flowing downwards actually goes underneath Montage Mountain Road there's a giant massive culvert if you guys want to see me return and maybe walk that let me know I don't know if it's I don't know if it's accessible to go all the way through but I'm pretty certain it is it's a pretty massive I think it's a concrete culvert that will take us underneath Montage Mountain Road. So if you guys have interest in seeing that, either as a standalone video or something else, a summertime return, obviously share your thoughts. Don't forget to, if you want to see me return to do those rocky outcroppings and potential little cavern areas, I will bring some lighting and hopefully bring somebody just to do it safely. But again, numerous things I could come back and return to film. But my last and final thought is just how bizarre it is that we find toys in the weirdest, most remote locations. Even though there is civilization around us, back there, it's relatively deep, you know? And just to have a lone Fisher Price Playhouse sitting there in between two rail beds, that's not something you would, you would imagine. You know, the stuff that we saw earlier, that was dumped there. That's a given. This is pretty remote. And to have one lone child's toy I don't know what to think of it. It makes for an interesting video, I will tell you that. But with that said, I do want to hear your additional feedback. If you have any information you could share about those insulators, about anything you saw as far as the TV, other things, you're welcome to share it down below. I love reading your comments. I love the feedback. I love getting educated on things and just seeing your excitement from the content I'm able to provide for you. If you want to see more videos like this, make sure you subscribe to the channel choose all when you ring the notification bell and that way you'll get alerts for new content and of course you can check my playlist for nature videos abandoned videos abandoned rail videos all types of good stuff can be found under my playlist so with that said on behalf of mr blue man group today and jerry springer and chuck woolery i want to thank you for watching and until next time i'll see you in the next video